Have you ever been so passionate about your beliefs and thought that your actions could make a positive impact only to realize later that you didn't have perspective? Well, I have. And recently, when I set out to try and make a positive impact, I learned a painful yet valuable lesson. Today, I'd like to share the mistakes I've made and some of the ways we all can be better allies and advocates to bring about social change in our communities. Since I was eight years old, I've been committed to serving as an activist and an advocate to help those affected by injustice of any kind. And today, I'm the founder of a youth alliance dedicated to addressing key issues affecting youth. And I continue to be passionate about social justice and committed to making a positive difference in my community. So back in the summer of 2020, when my hometown of Portland, Oregon, became a hotbed for the racial justice revolution that swept the nation, I knew I had to take action. And since I'm not part of the black community, I felt my role was best behind the lens of my camera. So I created a film and photography project to document the stark contrast between the empowering actions of the protesters and the destruction that ensued. I wanted to show the police brutality that was taking place at protests about police brutality. And above all, I wanted to dispel the myth that all protesters had become synonymous with rioters, a myth that had been perpetuated by the very people who condemned the Black Lives Matter movement. Shortly into the protests, I met a group of youth leaders from Portland's Black Lives Matter movement, and they invited me to a Zoom call. I was admittedly a little nervous, but extremely excited about the opportunity to promote my film and photography project to youth leaders, especially in the BIPOC community. And I also wanted to hear about their experiences. When I logged onto the Zoom call, there were already seven youth leaders present. And their first question for me was, what are your motivations for filming and photographing these protests we've organized? I told them, I want to challenge the false notion that all protesters are angry and violent through my photographs and documentary shorts. I was so passionate about this project and excited to pursue it. And I thought that everyone on the call would feel the same way. But their reactions left me with a pit in my stomach. Did you speak with anyone from the Black Lives Matter community first to get context, they asked me. I admitted I had not. Because I hadn't first paused to connect with advocates and allies of the movement like I was doing on the Zoom call now, I'd come way too close to perpetuating white supremacy through co-opting BIPOC stories for my own gain. The youth leaders on the call pointed out how, while my intentions might have been good, my art would actually have the opposite effect. It would sensationalize and promote a destructive story rather than helping end it. I became defensive and tried to justify my actions. I'm just documenting the events taking place, I told them. I'm just the person behind the camera. I'm just a tool to help spread a message. It took me some time to grasp the problem that my storytelling project that I was so excited and passionate about was really only told through a single lens, my own, my white cisgender male lens. It was a difficult conversation. But hearing the youth leaders give me feedback and dissect my ideas, that was even more difficult. I didn't want to believe that my social justice film and photography project didn't actually adhere to the principles of social justice, equity, and activism. 
that I wasn't listening to the communities I wanted to serve, that I wasn't making change and I wasn't being accountable for my impact. I began to share my feelings. How I was so frustrated at the fact that I had let my passion and excitement blind me to the bigger picture. And as I shared from a place of vulnerability and rawness, the words seemed to just flow easier. And by staying rooted in my honest emotions, I was able to begin to apologize. And that's when our conversation shifted. Through our discussion, as uncomfortable as it was, we had broken through into having a collaborative conversation. Now, they were still frustrated with me, and they had every right to be. And the youth leaders on the call could have ended it right there. But they didn't. And that was a pivotal moment. It taught me that there is such importance in forming connections with people who have perspectives and ideas that may oppose your own. After all, if we're not willing to show up in conversation with humility and thoughtfulness and listen with our whole heart and our whole mind, how can we ever expect to grow any social change movement? And without showing people the impacts of their actions and what they can do to change them, our act of calling someone out does nothing beyond affirming our own righteousness. And yet, it is natural to feel defensive and cling fiercely to your beliefs when your ideas are challenged by someone who may have a different perspective. But that only creates greater tension that makes it more difficult to have the important productive conversations that we need to be having, especially around sensitive topics. Perhaps you've experienced this with an issue that you may care about. For me, I know I've had plenty of experiences with this when working on issues surrounding climate change. I've testified many times at Oregon State Capitol, surrounded by people wearing anti-climate change patches and condemning climate policy. I've even felt the air around the Capitol building become dirty, dense, and smoggy as climate justice counter-protesters drove tractor trailers in circles around the building. I felt such fear and anger and disgust for what these people were doing to my future and our planet's future. And yet amidst that, I was standing in the rotunda of the Capitol building surrounded by the architecture of a building meant for the very purpose of debate, discussion, and ultimately collaboration. And so I decided I was not going to keep trying to convince others of my rightness. I was going to try and put myself in their shoes while still making space for my own beliefs. And it was difficult to balance the two. The fear I felt for my future, for our planet, for the natural world, it made me want to shout off dozens of facts challenging every idea. But I withheld my counters. And instead, I approached the counter-protesters with questions. What makes you feel this way? Why do you think that? How do you think we can create policies that will benefit both you and the environment? I tried to bridge our political and cultural divides by leading with curiosity, grasping for points of connection, and offering my honest emotions in response. And though I still 
didn't see eye to eye with the counter protesters, I was able to approach our conversation with a more open mind. And most importantly, I was able to get out of my head and into my heart. And that was when our conversation shifted. Even though I was still frustrated, I began to recognize that the counter protesters were protesting against climate policy because it threatened their livelihoods. And even more so, I began to see that the climate justice counter protesters, the people I believe to be stereotypical climate deniers, were actually not so unlike myself. We both feared for our future. And we both wanted to protect and preserve the world we each knew for our future generations. And most importantly, we both sought recognition from our politicians in a struggle that, at least on the people power front, felt like more of a miscommunication than a disagreement. And what solves miscommunication better than real, open-hearted, open-minded listening? The stories I've shared today illustrate the importance of being intentional in conversation, whether we are being called into discussion or we're initiating it. In order to create meaningful change, we must show up in conversation effectively communicating and listening to each other with humility and thoughtfulness. I believe we can all be social change artists, individuals who bridge, divides, and cross barriers in order to form connections with people who have ideas that may oppose their own. We all have the potential to invite in those who may challenge our ideas into transformative conversations to create change. We all have the opportunity to break through ignorance and resistance, to listen to and support one another in changing our own perspectives. And we all have the power to transform injustice into equity, apathy into action, and division into unity, one conversation at a time. Thank you.